Please join me in our call to worship and opening prayer. We come here from the world whose siren song tells us that we do not have enough. We do not buy enough. We are not enough. Here we relearn God's wisdom. That we have enough if we share. That security cannot be found in the marketplace. That we are, we are always enough. Center us once again, holy God. Round us in your love. Grow us toward your sense of abundance. Abundant listening, active love. Fullest life. Living God, open our hearts to the real treasures in life. May we seek the love that lasts. The song that echoes. And the life everlasting. Open our hearts to the Christ. The spirit of life. And you, the creator of all. The eternal one. Amen. Please join in singing All Who Hunger. <coughs> Please join me in our prayer of confession. Blessing, blessed God, we pray to you for our daily bread, for what we need. But in our worrying, we crave even more. In our fear that there may not be enough, we desire more than we need. In our hope to evade trouble, we look for refuge and rescue in a massive more and more things. Forgive us, dear God, for the times when our anxieties outweigh our sin. Forgive us when we think of ourselves, but forget to think of others. Forgive us that we do not seek our safety in you. Unclench our fists, open our hearts. Gracious God, hear our silent prayers as we confess those things that separate us from you and from each other. Friends, hear the good, good news. God is always there for us, ready to forgive us and always offering us steadfast love. Thanks be to God. 
please join in our psalm this morning. Again, I'll begin and then the men will respond and then the women and then all. And we'll repeat that pattern. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those he redeemed from trouble. And gathered in from the land. From the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to an inhabited house. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way until they reached an inhabited town. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love for his wonderful works to humankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and the hungry he fills with good things. Let those who are wise pay attention to these things. Consider the steadfast love of the Lord. May God bless this reading from God's holy word to our understanding and our faithful living. Amen. Please join in singing, Guide the O Thou Great. so wonderful to hear our choir. Um, we're grateful um, for them for recording all our music for Zoom services this summer. Let us pray. Oh God, may the words of my mouth, the thoughts of our minds, and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, our strength and redeemer. Amen. Psalm 107 is a psalm of gratitude and hope. It's not a, a thank you for everything. Um, it's, a, it's a deep felt gratitude. The psalmist knows that life is fragile and, and holds many challenges. But he also knows that remembering the stories of God's presence with the people of Israel assures us that God is with us and gives us reason to give thanks, even in the most challenging times, and to live in hope. The psalm has um, four different times of struggle. We're only reading the first one, but it talks about being lost in the desert. It talks about being prisoner. It talks about being ill, and it talks about being at sea and a storm coming up. Each of the struggles is followed by the refrain, and they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from distress. 
And after telling what the particular distress was that God saved them from, then the, the psalmist continues, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love and for his wonderful works. What a refrain for our lives. They cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love and his wonderful works to humankind. In our lectionary, we're reading about people being lost in the desert. This could be any kind of desert. It could be a, a struggle with mental health. It could be the challenges of a loss of job. But, but as, a, as the society of Israel, the time that he's remembering is the time when Moses led the people out of slavery in Egypt. He took them with God's help through the Red Sea to leave the Egyptian soldiers behind, and they entered into the wilderness. But instead of finding themselves in a new land flowing with milk and honey and uh, a place where they could settle, the people found themselves in the wilderness where they were hungry and thirsty. At one point, they've gone for three days without water, and they finally get to Mira. And they find water and they go to taste it and it's bitter. And they complain bitterly to Moses about why God led them out of Egypt only to die of thirst in the wilderness. And God tells Moses to take a piece of wood and to throw it into the water. And it turns the water from bitterness to fit to drink. Not long after they're in the desert of sin and the people are hungry. They can't find enough food for their huge company, and they don't know when they're going to eat again. And once again, they complain to Moses, and Moses prays to God. And God sends the manna in the morning, this fine, flaky substance, all over the ground and the plants. And, and they take it up, and they cook it, and they make it into bread, and find different ways to eat it. And then in the evening, God sends quails for them to have meat. They go along for another period of time. And again, they're thirsty at Rephidim. And this time there is no water, bitter or not. And, and they complain to Moses again. And this time God says, speak to the rock and touch it with your staff and there will be water for everyone. And Moses in his anger strikes the rock, but it, pours forth water from God. The psalmist is telling us that whatever our troubles, whether they're of our own making or something that happens to us, like the drought that we're experiencing this summer, God is with us. God will never give up on us. If we need forgiveness, God will forgive us. If we need help, God will help us. Whatever our troubles, God is there for us. And as I read these, the Psalm 107 and, and heard the, the refrain, I thought of Jesus' life and ministry and thought how he fulfilled each one of the struggles lifted up in the Psalm. He gave food to the hungry uh, when they were on the, the mountainside with loaves and fishes. He freed people. He freed them from demons. Um, the Gennesaret, he uh, lifted up the demons and sent them into the swine. He healed people who were sick, people who couldn't see, people who couldn't walk. And when the disciples were out on the sea in the middle of the storm, he calmed the sea. These stories remind us that whatever has happened, whatever we have done or been inherited that has been done, God is with us, God forgives us, and God provides us a way forward. In the past years, we have become more and more aware of the harm the church and the government did to our First Nations and Métis siblings. We uh, saw practices first of uh, taking land, then of forcing children into residential schools and, and continuing in the foster program. We've seen a generational impact where, of children being torn from their families, 
being abused in the system and turning to alcohol, not being able to return to their homes or returning in challenging ways and never learning to parent. So the struggles that happen to them continue to the next generations. And slowly, the church and the government have been responding. In our church, we've had apologies and the government um, put in place the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which brought us the calls to action. And, and we have been working towards finding ways to reconcile. This week, it was the Catholic Church's turn. The, the Indigenous folk had gone to Rome and asked the Pope to come to Canada. And, and he answered that request. And he came and, and was with them in Alberta and Quebec and Inuvik. And uh, <clears throat> I didn't, in the, in the time, listen to the Pope's messages. Um, but I listened to a lot of the media response and, and we heard people, we saw people clapping for his words, being thankful for what he shared, being grateful for, for a sense of growing reconciliation. And we heard others speaking out in anger, protesting, putting up signs that, um, to, about genocide and about the doctrine of discovery. And, and it was a, it was a challenge to hear and it gave me a lot of pause to think about what we expect and how we how we expect things to happen the the challenges that the our first nations and metis siblings face happened over centuries the idea that one visit from one man could turn everything around seems like a happily ever after ideal that could never be lived up to it, what I saw was a step on a journey of moving towards a new place, an acknowledgement of, of harm that was done, an acknowledgement of responsibility. And some people who were ready to hear that were grateful to have that experience and others that aren't ready yet. It's not their time and, and so still struggle with what they've heard. But it was, it was interesting for me to, um, to talk to Father Mark uh, this week from Sacred Heart and, and to reflect on how hard it is for the church to give the answers people outside the church want to hear. Our experiences and traditions have brought us to particular places that we can't set aside everything just because somebody says, throw it out. And we, we have to live with integrity with where we are. But what a gift that the Catholic Church was able to take this step, that the Pope was able to come and, and speak words of reconciliation and, and words um, of what it means to, to be family. And when he spoke about um, grandparents and spoke to the youth and urged them to, uh, to hold on to these memories, even though they're difficult, because they're what will help point us to a different path, to a new way of understanding and a letting go of colonization that it still happens in the world. And, and he was urging us to learn from this time and move forward together. I was really interested as I went back and read his different messages to uh, hear his response on, on the plane to reporters as he was leaving Canada. They had many questions for him, many that we had heard in newscasts and things. And uh, one, uh, one person said to him, well, why didn't you use the word genocide? This is a genocide. You should have used the word genocide. And the Pope said, well, yes, yes, I was describing a genocide. That's, that's what I was saying. Um, yes, his words are, yes, it's a technical word genocide, but I didn't use it because it didn't come to mind, but I described it. It's true, yes, it's genocide. Yes, you all be calm. You can say that I said that. Yes, that it was genocide. I think what, what his words tell us is that we can't always get the right word. We can't get the words that can erase the past, but we can learn from the past. We can repent for what has happened. We can look for the ways to make sure that we're not continuing to cause hurt now. 
we can acknowledge the wrongs and we can move towards reconciliation, but it will take time. People are in different places. So we need to continue to reach out to one another, to keep listening to one another. As you know, our general council has been going on um, through the year since February, and they had their time of decision making in the past week. And two proposals passed that will, we pray, help us rebuild relationships with our First Nation. The first proposal directs the General Secretary, Michael Blair, uh, to, and the General Counsel Office to remove the structural barriers towards developing and sustaining an autonomous Indigenous church. So to take away the things that keep from the, in, the our First Nations brothers and sisters from being church in their own way. Um, and within the larger church to continue a dialogue on reparations and right relations with the national Indigenous circle. The Indigenous Church identified this as a clear action to truly move away from the missionary past and towards being partners in God's call to all the earth. The second proposal helps facilitate the first, authorizing approval of a new structure of the Indigenous Church within the United Church and the relationship to the settler church as will be determined by the Indigenous Church in its own time and through its own processes. This will be done by the full church decision-making process referred to as a category three remit, but with a shortened process. What this means is every church in the country will receive this second proposal to approve the new structure for the Indigenous Church in the United Church, and that they would never have to come back to the whole church again to make a decision on how they will worship and be within the United Church. And instead of waiting the two years that it normally takes for a remit, the church is going to do it in a year. So this is our continuing our steps towards reconciliation, our, our hope that we can truly be partners in God's call to all the earth with our First Nations brothers and sisters. Our moderator, Ken, Carmen Lansdowne, um, is our second First Nations moderator. She's moderator elect until August 7th. And I trust that her presence and her leadership will help us find ways to move forward together as siblings in Christ. May we always turn to God in our distress and give thanks to the Lord for God's steadfast love and wonderful deeds. Amen. This morning in um, the time that we normally offer praise, I, I'd like to share uh, Carmen's words with you. I, I hope some of you have heard them already, um, but uh, trust that they will be new to some and that you will find something in them, even if you've heard them before. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Carmen et je suis honorée d'être la seule candidate au poste de moderatrice de l'Église unie du Canada. Je m'excuse d'avance que je manque de pratique pour parler français. En tant que personne qui ne peut pas parler ma propre langue autochtone, je vous prie de croire que je suis quelqu'un qui apprécie la diversité linguistique. Je promets d'améliorer mon français parlé. Friends, it has been an unusual first half of the year for me. When I was first asked if I would consider letting my name stand for moderator, I said yes because the request was earnest and I trusted those who approached me. But I wasn't in with two feet. Coming out of 2021 and the confirmation of unmarked graves that first made national news in Kamloops, but then have been followed by so many thousands of others, there have been times in the past year I've struggled with whether or not I could continue to serve the church, how any of us could continue to serve the church. I'm grateful to the board of directors and the leadership team at First United, where I've been in ministry leadership for the last five years. This spring, I was due for a sabbatical, and despite the nomination for moderator, the team at First United supported me taking a break as scheduled. 
It has been a grace-filled three months of learning, study, rest, travel, and rejuvenation. I was able to connect, to reconnect with my own deep sense of call, as well as what my own vision for leadership in the church might look like uh, at this time. And let's be clear, it is a frightening time. We are seeing the failure of social safety nets and the very heart of social democracy strain under the burden of unbridled forms of capitalism. Even before the pandemic and the disruptions to the supply chains and the opportunistic profiteering off of the pandemic, the increasing cost of living is quickly outpacing stagnating wages inside and outside of the church. While many important changes are starting to take effect in the smallest and most hopeful of ways, there is still much to do as a country and as a church when it comes to reconciliation and the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people in this church and in Canada. And that's without looking at our global corporate existential threats like climate, the climate emergency. And I see all this. I see you my siblings in Christ who are struggling under the weight of all this. While many communities of faith struggle at the local level, we are asked to do more and say more about what is happening to the world around us. We stumble in our human fallibility, putting up obstacles to the full thriving of the created order. Change comes too fast for some and not fast enough for others. And in all this, we must dare to imagine what we are called to as one small branch of the tree that is the whole Christian family. We have affirmed and will be affirming our call to deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice. But if there are millions of people in this country who identify as United Church, there are just as many millions of interpretations of what those words actually mean in action. Those of you who know me know I am passionate about social justice, whether it is economic or racial, domestic or global, and especially about reconciliation, or more accurately, what we say in my own First Nations language, which means to turn around and to make things right. Much like the Christian idea of repentance, it is a lived amends that focuses on making things right. But for me, what needs to be made right between Indigenous and non-Indigenous Canadians is intimately connected to the myriad ways that our lives are out of balance more generally. Do I have a lot of answers for how to do that? No. Do I have a lot of opinions? Probably. They also have faith, hope, and love. Faith that together we can practice deep spirituality, bold discipleship, and daring justice. Hope that what Jesus promised us is true, that when two or three of us are gathered in the name of Creator, that our prayers will be heard. And love. I have deep love for this church, for all of you, for every person. A long time ago, I made a contract with myself that I would be a woman of integrity, just loving people as an extension of God's grace. And while I don't really know what I'll be getting myself into as moderator, there's a lot I know I don't know. I do know that I can promise you that, to continue to be a woman of integrity, just loving people as part of my calling to serve the church. My grandmother once reminded me never to forget that we are an Easter people and that we believe in the resurrection. The more I learn about brain science, the more I believe that the purpose of that part of our story is because when we stay in a place of hope, we are creative and we can solve problems really, really well. And thanks be to the Creator for that, because together we have some work to do. May it be so. Amen. When have you turned to God in your distress, or when have you experienced hope and healing? Thanksgiving is a part of each of our worship services, and this is the time when I pause and am so grateful for each one of you. Um, this week we had Rockwood trustees meeting and working towards uh, selling property and and uh, building a new parking lot. And I know that there's been a huge amount of energy put into that and that work. And, and I know that um, we have people taking care of our churches. Jack and Edie often drive by to make sure everything is, is in order and you have people looking after our gardens and our lawns. And 
we're just thankful for everyone who helps to support our ministries in any way. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we offer ourselves and our gifts in gratitude for all that we have received. We pray that what we give and what we do on behalf of our churches of Rockwood and Stone makes a difference not only in our communities, but in the world, so that your kingdom might come on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Please join me now in our prayers, and if you have prayers to add, you're welcome to put them in the chat. Let us pray. Creator God, we give thanks for your good earth, for all your creatures and creation, and, and we pray that you would help us find ways to care for your earth. We, we think of the um, challenges because of climate change, the droughts and the fires and the floods, and, and we pray that you would show us ways to change our behavior to help better care for your earth and your creatures. We continue to live into um, what it will mean to have COVID with us for a long time, and, and we struggle to find how to be in that space, whether to mask or not mask, whether to be with people or keep our distance. And we just pray for your spirit's guidance. And we pray for um, wisdom for leaders who continue to need to make decisions around keeping people safe and ways to move forward. We especially pray for um, caregivers, for nurses and doctors who um, because of the pandemic, are experiencing um, shortages of personnel and our burnout. And we just ask you to surround them with your healing and hope and, and to surround uh, the decision makers uh, with wisdom so that they can help uh, to turn the situation around. God, wherever there is war, violence, injustice, or abuse, we pray for your peace. We pray especially for peace in, in Ukraine, we, um, between Ukraine and Russia. We uh, ask that there would be change of heart on behalf of the Russian leadership and that so that a peace might be restored and, and people might be able to return to their home. We pray that you would be with those uh, refugees that have had to find homes all around the world and especially those who are being asked to leave the Donbass region this morning by their president. God, we pray in our prayer cycle for the people of the Republic of Congo, Congo Gabon, Semtom, and Principe. We, we ask you, God, too, to be with all those who have experienced discrimination and um, are and other challenges because of their race or their religious beliefs. We think especially of our Black, First Nation, Métis, South Asian, and LGBTQ2S plus brothers and sisters. We help people see one another as siblings and as your children and care for one another. God, we give you thanks for the um, Hope's visit this week for the hope it brought to some and, and for the voices that were lifted up that continue to offer challenges to us as church to, to continue on the path of reconciliation. We thank you for the decisions made at our general council and pray that we can live into them in a faithful way. God, we ask your blessing on the church, wherever people gather to worship you, that we might truly be the hands and feet of Christ in your world. We pray for our congregations of Rockwood and Stone, asking your blessing on each person gathered here and those who can't be with us. We uh, pray for Mark and Chloe Southwell as they mourn the death of Jenny. And we lift up to you, Bart, Bet, Caden, Deborah, Paul and Diane, Doug and Virginia, Fran, Pete, 
Evelyn, Georgina, Ord, Grace, Harry, Heather, Joan, John, Leela, Linda, Mabel, Marion, Ollie, Sandy, Sarah, Sheila and Roy, Susan, Tammy, Wendy, and Victoria. God, we ask for healing for all those struggling with physical and mental conditions and illnesses. We pray for patience for caregivers. We ask you to be with those who are struggling in relationships to find loving ways forward. We ask for companionship for the lonely and for refuge for the homeless. We lift up to our partners, Anishinaabeg Outreach, the Canadian Food Grains Bank, the Early On Program, East Wellington Community Services, Mission and Service, and the Rural Women's Support Program. We pray for our neighbors, Sacred Heart and Rockwood and St. Peter's Catholic Church in Ospic, for Thames View United Church in Fullerton, and for the East Central Ontario Regional Council, for the ministers, members, friends, and staff of our United Church across Canada and around the world. We pray for our incoming moderator, Carmen Lansdowne, for our General Secretary, Michael Blair. God, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and answer in your love. We close our prayer with the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who are Lord, in heaven, hallowed be your name. Amen. Your kingdom Lord, come, come. Your Lord, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not, not into temptation, but deliver death. us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please uh, join in singing our closing hymn, You Satisfy the Hungry Heart.
friends go into this day confident that when you are in distress, you can cry out to God and God is with you and that we are invited to respond in gratitude and hope, confident that God's kingdom will come. Go now in the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, this day and always. Amen. If you could reach out to Paul, uh, he was trying very hard to reach you. Thanks, Elsa.